Welcome to Legislative Updates. I'm your host, Doug Thompson, and as always, my special guest is John Barker, representative from the 70th District, and that's the area that we're in uh, here in the Chapman, Abilene, all of this area up here. And uh, as you recall from the show, what happens is John comes directly from the legislature, usually brings a very good guest, and he has this time. And John comes in, and we do an update on the legislature, and that's why it's called Legislative Updates. And as you're looking at your screen, on your left is John Barker. And and in the middle, Troy Waymaster. And Troy, you're from the 100th District at um, Bunker Hill area. 109th, 109th District. 109th, yes. that's right. Pleasure to have you here. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah, and thank I you, know John, that, for inviting uh, me to be here today. You guys have had a long week, and you've taken time on the way back to your territory to uh, stop in, and we appreciate it. And I understand you're doing another show later tonight. You'll yes, be at 7 p.m. I'll be doing the Kansas Legislature on Smoke Hills Public Television. Okay, awesome. Well, John, update us. What's happened this week or the past two weeks in the legislature? Past two weeks, we, you know, we did not uh, have a show last week. It's week six. Uh, committees are still meeting. We're getting close to turnaround. And as I explained to the folks before, turnaround is when the House stops working House bills for the non-exempt committees. And uh, we take four or five days off and transfer the bills from the Senate that have passed over to the House and the House bills that have passed over to the Senate. Uh, fortunately, uh, Troy is... Uh, Chairman of Appropriations, he has an exempt committee, and yep. I have Fed and State, which is an exempt yep. committee, so we don't worry about those dates. No, we don't have to worry about the date. We don't have to worry about the dates, but we'll be off about five days uh, during turnaround while the, uh, the clerks get all that arranged. Uh, and folks, we don't get paid during that five days. Uh, we do come home, but uh, it's like the 26th, 27th, 28th, we'll, we'll be on the floor all day. We'll be passing bills out that have passed committees. Uh, the big thing that happened this week was uh, we took the governor's uh, capers proposal, which we've talked the last two weeks about, or the last two uh, shows, shows. Mm -hmm. and uh, so uh, it was on. It was on financial institutions and capers, and it did pass out without recommendation. Uh, we had it on the floor yesterday. Mm -hmm. Did a debate for about an hour and a half. Uh, the proposal that she had, the bill that she had, w failed, uh, 87 to 36. It was a bipartisan vote. A number of Democrats voted against the bill also. It's the bill, folks, if you'll remember. She gets $145 million this year, and it will cost us $7.4 billion over the next 30 years. Uh, I, it's, it's a bill that, uh, you know, you just can't pass. I mean, we can't put uh, our grandchildren, and in, in my case, possibly my great-grandchildren, in debt for that. So uh, now we'll start anew and she'll have hopefully have a new proposal that she'll work with us on. And uh, so uh, we're looking forward uh, to turn around and we'll see what happens the last uh, few weeks of the session prior to the veto session, Doug. And that's been pretty much it. You know, John, when I was reading the paper yesterday or today, whichever it was, and I was looking at that and there was the, the article was uh, saying that uh, you wouldn't have done this for Brownback. You would have carried this on through. But that's not true. He asked for that same thing to kick that, uh, take down. the caper's money and kick it down the road, and it was denied, wasn't and it? it was, uh, he wanted 10 years, and we denied it. And she asked for 30 years, which, of course, you know how the interest would accumulate over the next an additional 20 years. So, uh, no, we didn't approve it for Brownback. And, um, we didn't approve it for this governor. Yeah, and this would have made, as you said, it would have made a difference, as I recall from the guest about two weeks ago, $7.4 billion. Right, over 30 yeah, years. Yeah, over 30 years at that 7.5 interest rate accumulates, right. and that's a lot of money. Yeah, you know, and, and that's a rate people always ask, why is that rate? Well, that rate is the assumption rate set by the Capers Board, uh, and it's 7.75%. You can't go below that. And uh, so, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's a difficult to, to imagine how fast that will accumulate. It's not like going out and getting a zero percent right. uh, loan. Uh, we have to pay that right. We have an obligation to CAPERS, both based on federal law and state law. We, folks with CAPERS, your trust fund is safe. Uh, you know, you always get those. Uh, we did have a, an amendment, and I should mention that, about a cost of living allowance. Um, it failed also because that would just add to the unfunded actuarial. Uh, Capers was never designed for a cost of living. It was designed to retire at 62 and 65. Of course, the legislature in 92 and 93 changed that to the 85 points, which was one of the major causes of the unfunded actuarial. 
But uh, so, yeah, we'll start a new, and uh, I'm sure we'll. Troy here's responsibility is getting a budget together. It's uh, a small task. A small task. <laughs> uh, it'll probably bad. be the last of the session, but. Uh, uh, you know, he does a great job at it, and uh, when we take a break and come back, you know, maybe you'll inquire of him how he does that. Yeah, I'm going to be It's very complicated. Yeah. He's got a number of budget uh, committees that work for him. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but, Doug, that's about it. Next week, you know, we're going to be here, and then we'll be off on the 26th, 27th, 20th. We'll be on the floor, 26th, 27th. I'll be passing the bills and then turn around. Okay. All right. Time for us to cut away, take a break. You're watching Legislative Updates. Welcome back to Legislative Updates. I'm your host, Doug Thompson, and on your far left is John Barker, and in the middle, Troy Waymaster. And Troy, you're from the 109th District, which is the Bunker Hill area. Yes. And uh, you're working on your fourth term in the legislature. Mm -hmm. Same right? as John. Yep. yep, same as John. Came in together. Yeah, and uh, uh, last time when we did the show, we were talking about uh, what an advantage is for the community to have an experienced representative. Uh, at the legislature for them because, you know, there's a learning curve for everything. There is. And when you come in in this setting here and now you're on your fourth term, you have worked your way up into leadership positions. And I know this, that uh, as I was reading your bio and we were talking, you're a farm kid. I am. And grew up on, a farm, on a farm uh, a few miles south of Bunker Hill? Yes, uh, just about one mile south of the Smoky Hill River. Okay. All right, and then you went to KU? I went to the University of Kansas when I graduated from Russell High School uh, in 1996 and graduated in 2000 with a degree in political science. All right, and then you also picked up some classes later at uh, Fort Hayes State. Yeah, um, one of the jokes that one of my professors had at the University of Kansas when parents would come in and their, their kid wanted to get a political science degree is their first question was, is, well, what kind of job can the kid get with that? And he said, really, not much. <laughs> uh, and uh, so when I graduated at the University of Kansas in 2000, I decided to pursue my MBA, but I went back home to helped my dad and my uncle on the farming operation during the summer, and then I started looking at Fort Hayes State University uh, for their uh, master's business administration program. You know, it's funny you would mention that because when my son went to college, uh, uh, I said, what do you want to major in? And he said, political science. And, and I have a degree in history and, and uh, some others. And uh, I said to him, well, what do you do with that? Well, I mean, what will you be when you get done? How are you going to be employable? Well, he's very employable. <laughs> yeah, I would say it, it really it doesn't matter, uh, I think, in some aspects what degree you have, because then in October of 2000, uh, I was contacted by Chrysler Financial, the financial arm of, then it was Daimler Chrysler uh, Motors, and uh, I uh, then accepted a job in Kansas City, and that was purely finance, uh, nothing to do with political science, obviously. Um, and so then I was in the, in the finance yeah. realm, basically in corporate finance, for a total of 12 years. Uh, before joining the legislature in 2013. All right, got it. So tell me in regards to the legislature, what committees are you on and do you chair any of the committees? There is only one committee that I serve on and that is the Appropriations Committee, which is the budget committee for the House of Representatives. Um, and I'm the chairman of the Appropriations Committee. And so as John kind of talked about, mm -hmm. um, one of the things that our biggest task is to put the budget together. Uh, the House position, as far as the budgetary items for the House, get that through the process, and then when the Senate passes their version of the budget, we go to conference committee and we work out the differences between the two. And sometimes, uh, my first year as appropriations chairman, that took a total of four days and nights to go through all those differences. Uh, last year, uh, because I had a little bit of a learning experience from the prior year, uh, it only took us about two and a half days. Uh, to work out the differences. Plus, uh, we were only kind of uh, talking about some changes to the budget bill that was passed in 2017, but when you're actually passing the first budget out of the biennium, uh, that takes a lot longer because there's a lot more information included in that budget. This year is going to be a little bit different. Governor Brownback always proposed, uh, during our years two in years. the legislature, he two proposed two-year two year budget. budget, so there were a lot more items that we would discuss right. in conference committee. Uh, this year, uh, Governor Kelly has reverted back uh, to only a one-year budget, um, which uh, I would prefer a two-year so we could kind of schedule things out right. and look at the future. Um, but uh, she proposed a one-year budget. I talked to the Senate chairperson for Ways and Means. They're going to do a one-year budget because the House contemplated doing a two-year budget. But then when we go to conference committee and we have a two-year budget and they have a one, 
then it's going to be a house position yeah, right. and they're not going to take all of the house position. Right. So we're right now we're working on a one year budget uh, for fiscal year 2020 yeah. uh, for the state of Kansas. And you should watch this, Doug. I mean, it's interesting. They're, they're in conference. They have these large amounts of each line item mm -hmm. on the budget. And you they either agree or they disagree. If they disagree, they check it off and say, okay, we'll talk about that later. But just going through it, I was on one budget committee and I was on with the speaker when he was appropriations mm -hmm. chair and I was on the judiciary budget. Uh, and uh, we, we, I think we were able to get through that in one long day. But I can't imagine when you have the entire budget. Well, I think in 2017, when you looked at those differences between the Senate right. and the House, right. we had pretty much 25 front and back pages of differences that we had to go through and negotiate. That's just the differences. That's Difference. just the differences. Right. Wow. The things that you agree on, they go through pretty quickly, yeah. but the, the differences, you have to negotiate and each the, one of them. And then when you're in conference committee and either the Senate will take the House position or the House will agree to take the Senate, and then you get into the quandary of, well, we're going to take a Senate modified. So then it's your proposal right. of where you kind of want to meet in the middle, right. and then you wait to see if the Senate's going to take that position or if they come back with what they would call a House modified position. And so it goes back, back and, and forth, forth. And, uh, and teeters along, and then it usually comes down to the three, two or three last items. And, and those uh, differences are worked out uh, usually between the chairperson of Ways and Means and myself and then we kind of go back right. and say to our members, this is what we're going to do. And then we agree on it. And it's just simply a handshake saying this is our agreement. And then mm -hmm. we take those back. the conference committee reports back to the respective chambers, vote on it. And then uh, so far it's passed. And, uh, we haven't got to go back. This process takes patience. Oh, I can't patience, imagine. Patience. Patience. It takes a lot of patience. It does. Well, that's where, see, that's where that person, uh, that political science degree really came in to help you with that budget. <laughs> yeah, it and does. You're also in banking, though. I was know. in banking, okay. yes. I was All in right. banking for six years. I was a branch manager for uh, three banking facilities. Uh, but when I decided to run for the legislature, I kind of knew what the bank's position was going to be as far as me retaining my job. Uh, so my, I made a deal with him because uh, I already had uh, made an agreement with my father that I would go Back to and the family back farm. Back to the family farm yeah. and uh, work with my dad and my uncle. Yeah. When we're talking about the uh, family farm, and we're going to come back to that here in just a little bit, but we're going to cut away, take a break. You're watching Legislative Updates, and we come back and want to talk to you about that family farm. Okay. Welcome back to Legislative Updates. I'm your host, Doug Thompson, with my regular guest, John Barker. It's his show. Without John, we wouldn't have Legislative Updates. And our special guest, Troy Waymaster. And Troy, we were talking uh, right before we cut away to break about the family farm. Yes. Yeah. And how many acres are you farming? Oh, we farm probably about uh, 7,000. That's a lot of acres. Irrigated yeah, would, ground? No, all of, it's, all of it is uh, dry land farming. No, yeah. no irrigated. And uh, I know you're married, Crystal, yes. and uh -huh. you were telling me before we started you got a newbie, five-month-old yes. son. Yeah, my uh, son was born in September of 2018. Well, congratulations. Thank you. And that, Thank you very everything much. Everything changed the minute everything, you saw that yeah, little one, Your life one, completely it? changes uh, when they come into this world. Yeah. Well, listen, let's talk a little bit about the legislature. Tell me on this, th this budget, because as a layperson looking at this, that's a tough one to understand how you arrive at it. So I'll ask the obvious question, what is the budget for the one year? How, how much is it? Well, generally, the one-year budget is going to be anywhere from about, if you talk about all funds, you're talking about $14 billion. But when you talk about state general fund, it's about $6 billion. Um, and so the all funds would be, you know, when you calculate fees or uh, tax money that is directed for one specific purpose, like for KDOT, or you talk about federal funds that come in, that's where the total $14 billion budget comes. That's where you derive that number. Um, the $6 billion is state general fund allocations. Uh, so what we, how you break that down is um, the governor gives her, you know, she gave her state of the state speech. And then the next day, uh, they, re they released the details of her budget. Uh, we had a joint meeting with the House Appropriations and Senate Ways and Means. And the budget director, Larry Campbell, who served in the House right. with John and I right. uh, for a number of years, um, he went through the major details uh, and specifications of the, of the governor's budget. Then once that happens, then our research department takes the governor's budget and basically breaks it out. And I have uh, budget committees 
that serve under the House Appropriations Committee mm -hmm. and then those that budget is broken out for those respective budget committees. They have hearings which started in about the middle of February uh, with the departments and agencies on all of the supplemental requests or enhancements that they would like to mm -hmm. have seen with their uh, agencies and departments and then just this last Monday uh, we had the uh, budget committee chairman uh, report some of those uh, enhancements, recommendations from their budget committee back to the Appropriations Committee. When they report that to the Appropriations Committee, we then take a look at the recommendation and say, yeah, we agree with the budget committee's recommendation on that, or we don't. All right. And we can pull it out or size it down and say, we would rather do this or just eliminate it. Um, so the final decision actually comes to the Appropriations uh, Committee on when we construct the budget, um, and pretty much about the end of March because we have these budget report outs starting on Monday, February 11th, and they go until March 14th. Okay, so if I understand this then, if a committee that uh, wants to get funding, do they inflate the amounts in anticipation that it's going to be less? They come in with actual figures, or even if they inflate it, I'm assuming that somebody in, in these committees that you're talking about overlooks those figures and has comparisons from the year before and has a pretty good feel for all of that, am I right? Well, we look at all the requests, and sometimes some of these requests have been made for many years. Um, for example, uh, last year we had with the insurance department, they wanted to put a uh, new carpet right. in their building. And the request for it, I, th I think it was for, uh, I can't remember exactly the square mm. footage, but the request was for $100,000 uh, to replace the carpet. Well, it passed out of the budget committee but then we started analyzing in appropriations and we started calculating the square footage, the cost per square footage, and we're like, this is not right. right. There is no way it's gonna cost $3,000 per square foot to put in carpet. So we rejected the uh, enhancement for the carpet and then that triggered the insurance department to come back and say, oh, you know, our figure was wrong. And so sometimes you do have to be careful yeah. on some of the enhancements. Uh, but a lot of them, uh, like one of the biggest ones that we have this year, uh, again, uh, we've had this for the last couple of years, are pay increases for our state employees. Um, we're looking at uh, correctional officers uh, a little bit differently than we are the rest of the state of employees. Uh, we're looking at, uh, as John right. um, talked about, one of the cornerstones of the governor's budget was the CAPERS reamortization. Uh, now that that has officially been uh, it denied, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we have to look at a way of, of piecing the budget back together. Um, one of those uh, was a couple years ago in the Pool Money Investment Board, we took a loan out of against an investment account. Uh, mm -hmm. That was in 2017 when we had a deficit situation. Um, so we took a loan out against that, that uh, investment fund. That's a 0% loan that we're supposed to be paying over for the next five years. In Governor Kelly's budget proposal, she wants it paid off all in 2019. So when you try to analyze exactly the rationale behind paying off a 0% loan and then refinancing capers, capers at, with an extra cost, yeah, exactly. it's like, okay, why don't we not do the reamortization right. and then let's change the schedule on the PMIB loan so where we don't pay it off all in 2019, but maybe in two payments. Right. And so that loosens up some money that we can have directed towards CAPERS, which right now uh, the Senate passed Senate Bill 9, which is authorizing $115 million uh, to go to CAPERS from back payments that we haven't made in 2016. Uh, right now we had a hearing on that in the House Appropriations Committee on Tuesday, and this coming Tuesday uh, on the, uh, what day would that be? That'd be that's right before turnaround. Right before turnaround, right. we're going to be working that bill and then kicking it out so the ho entire house can vote on it. Mm -hmm. So that we can make that payment, we can make our CAPERS payment, we can try to look at uh, reducing the transfer from uh, the state general fund to KDOT to help KDOT out and actually completing some of the projects. Um, so by just making right. some modifications to the governor's budget, uh, we can get through it and address the needs of the state. All right, we're gonna cut away, take a break. You're watching Legislative Updates.
Welcome back to Legislative Updates. I'm your host, Doug Thompson. This will be the final segment of this show, and it always goes by like that. And I, I appreciate it. I know when we were talking uh, before we went on screen, Troy, that your dad was, uh, your grandfather was in World War II. Yes, was at he the was. Battle of the Bulge. Your dad served in Vietnam, and yeah. uh, and then they're on the family farm. That's fantastic. John served in the military for for many many yeah, years. Yeah, and my father was in World War II. Yeah, uh, but yeah. Yeah, you know it is, and we just appreciate I'm it. I'm a little for older than you, actually. <laughs> <laughs> but we appreciate it for what you guys are doing uh, at the well, legislature. We really have a lot of confidence, you guys taking time to come in and share that information, and it makes it so much more plain, and I'm anxious to see what's going to come up with the legislator, legislature in this next week, and maybe we'll talk because so I know one, of, yeah. one of the topics <laughs> coming up is going to be about uh, sales tax on food, and we'll pick up that at another time. All right. Thanks for watching Legislative Updates. Troy, thank you. All right, thank you. All right, take care.